All right, so today we're gonna take this uh, Strix RTX 4090 and we're gonna, uh, it's basically gonna lose some girth, but it's gonna gain some weight because I'm gonna throw an EK water block on it. A couple different blocks here, both the active backplate and a standard backplate block. Uh, we're gonna take a look at them as well as some other stuff I got from performance PCs for my Black Ice build update. So I figured I'd take you guys along for the ride on at least what it takes to install a water block on this guy. I haven't done it before. I have no idea what might be different. Today's video is brought to you by the JC Sense merch store. We got t-shirts and gaming mats and mugs and all that kind of stuff. So whenever you go buy our stuff, we don't have to put other ads here and other annoying crap. So go buy our stuff. It's funny, the PCB on this card only goes to the power cable. So we're losing this much length, but uh, in terms of like thickness and stuff, it's gonna be much, th it's only gonna be a single slot card, which would be nice. Unless we go with the active backplate, which you'll see, it adds the thickness of a block to the backside. I don't think I'm gonna be able to run the active backplate because of the motherboard that I'm using. And I'll show that once it's like, it'll interfere with the heatsink. But anyway, um, there's some other things that came that I ordered from performance PCs. I get asked a lot like, Jay, where do you get your custom water cooling stuff from? Oh, I have a lot of stickers. And you know, performance PCs, is a US based water cooling slash PC modification shop. They do a lot more than just water cooling. They custom backplate or custom, yeah, custom painting, UV printing, custom distribution blocks, custom cables, like also, they're kind of like your one stop shop for both DIY modifications to your systems, mostly water cooling and then uh, custom stuff that can be made with them. But they're based out of Florida, I believe they're Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And yeah, you can get anything you need for your systems there. So they've been, you guys have probably seen them advertise on my channel a lot. They are uh, who I have gotten my water cooling stuff from. This is interesting. Anyway, my water cooling stuff from for years. So what have we got here? This is a bike ski uh, pump, right? Yes, this is a pump. The funny thing is I got this just for the pump and I don't plan on using the other pieces of it, which is too bad because this is a pretty sick pump. Now this video is gonna be about like the water block going on the 4090, but I wanna show you this other stuff that I picked up from them. So I got this big old beefy, which i am be honest, like I wish I could use it this way because it looks so good, but I needed the pump. So I will be taking this apart and taking the pump out, which just seems like such a waste. I'll be keeping all the parts obviously because I can put another pump back in it whenever I recover one, but this is a cool looking block. It's all metal construction. Is that metal? Possibly. It's heavy enough to be metal. And then that's just the outlet top right there for your, for your fittings and stuff. Uh, oh, the shirts. I did ask for some new Performance PC shirts. You guys have seen me wear them. Mine are pretty worn out because they're like six years old. <laughs> um, this is the EK Cryofuel, full Cryofuel Mystic Fog. Now this one here, we'll just have to show up a photo, put a photo up. I want to try this. I hope it doesn't gunk up my system. I have been just back to colored distilled water for the most part because of all of the opaques and stuff just causing all kinds of gunking up of the system. This just adds a sort of a kind of a misty look to the fluid, which gives lighting something to bounce off of, which I think will look really cool in the distribution blocks that I've already showed. Um, and then there's just more of the torque fittings, which are the ones that I like to use for my um, rigid tubing. I've got a few colors here. I've got black and then I've got another one. I sort of took this opportunity to kind of restock some of the stuff that I really needed. What? I could have swore I only got four of those. Why do I have five? Did I, did I accidentally hit there? Okay, I know for a fact, I think I might have double ordered some of this stuff because <laughs> I don't think I had this many initially. This, this, this? This is the EK Quantum Velocity 2 CPU water block. This is an AMD water block or AM5 because I am doing an AM5 system. Uh, why is this one so much heavier? Oh, cause this is full nickel. That's why. M5, okay, it's just so heavy. So this one is an acetal, like just a plexi top. That is a full nickel. I, I, I grabbed each, one of each cause I couldn't decide which one I wanted to use for my build. We'll look at those in another video, not today's. Um, because I am doing a 7950X3D. I'm glad I waited because of the fact that, please open carefully, smiley face. Glass. I think this is some, I think this is a mug or something. Uh, a lot of you guys were like, you should do an X3D. And I was like, you know what? Did you know these are edible? Tastes like rice cakes. This is the box for the water block? The f It's longer than the card. I've never seen a water block <laughs> box this big. So this one's the standard block. I can tell by the weight of it because it doesn't have the active back weight. But this is like a, this was a, what I considered a big box in the past. This is like an EK Vega box, like for a Vega block. 
<laughs> my really just keeps getting bigger. Anyway, this is the non-active backplate. This one, oh my God. This is the active backplate. It's just getting, it's actually thicker than the This is insanity. I wish I could use the active backplate so badly because, well, here's the thing. I would have to go vertical mount to use the active backplate which would be fine, except for the fact that, but the distro blocks on the bottom, I like the way it looks fully covered rather than the one that has to cut out. Anyway, and then we've got two of the EK um, Quantum Surface 360 rads. I'm not gonna unbox any of these parts now. I just, like I said, I wanted to do kind of a quick little unboxing, make sure I'm not missing anything here because the focus of today's video, I'll eat those later. Like the fo focus of today's video is, uh, just to get the water block installed. So let's see, let me move this out of the way. I want to weigh this real quick. So the weight of an RTX 4090 Strix, <laughs> we've already done this before, 2,513 grams, okay? The weight of the non-active block, 2,143 grams. <laughs> I have a feeling the active backplate is gonna go off the scales. Let's see. 2,884 grams. I have to install a block today, but I don't know which one I can use. The active backplate's cool. I just don't think actively cooling the back of the 4090 is gonna matter because I don't believe there's any RAM back there. But the first thing I've got to do is clear off this table and I've got to pull the cooler off of that card, which I've never done. So I don't know what the process is. So of course I'm using my iFixer. You know what I like to do? I like to just start unscrewing stuff and see what happens. I like the way the Strix cooler looks. I just hate the red and blue. Why red and blue? Blue isn't even a, was never even a part of ROG's color scheme. They're like, let's, Jay hates color, let's add one. I guarantee I was not a thought in their design. <laughs> I guarantee it. But I, I knew from the moment we got this card that I was gonna go with this for my build. I really was hoping that AMD's cards would have been more powerful than they are. I was hoping that they were gonna have something out that was comparable to like a 4090, cause then I would have considered using it. But since my build is just about creating the best gaming PC that I possibly can, with, with all diminishing returns and, and all, the 4090 is all I have to go with. That's metal. Yeah. That's why this card is so heavy. But there you go, you can see the length. This is the length of card I was expecting to, to go with, like to have, but that's clearly not the way it went. This actually seems like it's gonna come apart. Dude, it has a freaking subframe. Right here? <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it's all metal. I think the only thing holding it on now is just these four screws. This might be one of the easiest teardowns ever. So I love the iFixit kits. They have every possible bit you would need, even the pentalobe uh, anti-tamper stuff that Apple uses. And you know the reality is, versus this cooler, the water block probably isn't gonna bring the temps down a whole lot because the cooler is already so massive in terms of its thermal dissipation. But this is just about kind of going back to my roots with water cooling stuff. I sort of, I sort of got away from a lot of my roots um, with the water cooling stuff and I regret that. A lot of folks are, Jay, bring back the water cooling videos. Well. So there's, some screw there's always gonna be some screws on the back plate or the retention bracket deal here that screw directly into the cooler. The thing is I just always undo the ones that seem most obvious at first and then kind of keep going from there. Now, back in the day, they would offer a single slot bracket, but obviously they can't do that with this card because it's not single slot for the IO as you can see, so. Okay, I'm pretty sure I have to undo. Nope, we're good. There it is, okay. When you're taking it apart, be careful of thermal pads. You can see that thermal pad that's tearing and pulling apart right there. Now it's gonna be okay, but I don't wanna rip it too badly because if I ever need to revert this, I want to try and reuse all the stuff that I can. I also know that I have cables plugged in right here, which is gonna be for lighting and fans and all that. That's it. That might be one of the easiest teardowns ever, to be honest. So the only thing on the back that would be actively cooled would be potentially like all these capacitors and stuff for the backside of the VRM, maybe the backside of the GPU die itself. <sighs> Dang, I gotta make a decision now. Am I going vertical mount or horizontal? Because going traditional layout is the only way I'd be able to use the active backplate. No, I'm sorry, vertical mount is the only way I could use the active backplate. I think I'm just gonna go non-active backplate right for now. If I decide to go active backplate, I'll just change it again.
Corsair brings gaming to the next level with the Xenion 45-inch flexible OLED Xenion Flex display. With up to 240Hz refresh rate, 0.03 millisecond greater gray response time, motion blur canceling, anti-reflective coating, burn-in protection, and customizable bend based on user's preference, the Xenion Flex from Corsair allows gamers to truly tailor their display to their liking. Click the link below for more details. I like to sort of dry rub, <laughs> sorry. I like to remove as much of the thermal paste as I can before using the alcohol. Um, because then it doesn't mush around as much. I'm also going to use a toothbrush to uh, get as much as I can away from all the edges there. And then I'm also going to have to do the same thing for all of, yeah, just put that right there. I'm going to do the same thing for all of the memory pads. So as you can see, all the memory modules had thermal pads on there too, and there's a lot of like leftover residue, and we just want to get all that off. Because obviously the, the new block is going to come with its own thermal compound debating on depending on what they used. I might just put Kingpin on here because the KPX is just some of the best stuff. KPX and Cryonaut are like the, the pink Cryonaut, some of the best stuff that you can possibly get. And I think I might actually just do that instead of using what they've got. Now I'm using a blue towel here, which as you can see is ripping up and leaving residue. So you're gonna definitely need to make sure that you either use a, not compressed air from like a compressor, but like a, electronics cleaner, blower fan type deal to make sure you get all that residue off or the, the fibers because that'll definitely hamper performance if you get that in there. Now the nice thing about alcohol, the isopropyl alcohol, it's not gonna hurt anything on the PCB. It might discolor it a little bit if you let it sit on there too long, but it's a great neutralizer for all of the solvent, or not the solvents, but the, uh, yeah, this is a great solvent for all of the residue that's left behind from like the thermal pads and stuff. So when I'm done with cleaning this off, I'm gonna take it out into my shop and I'm just gonna use my little vacuum blower thingy that I've got that I use to dust, get dust out of systems to make sure all these little fibers and stuff are gone. So there you go. It's about as clean as I've ever made a block before doing an install. Like I said, I'm gonna do the non-active backplate first. I, I'm pretty sure even if I go vertical mount, I'll probably still just not use the active backplate just for simplicity. I don't think it's necessary. I think it's a neat, Feature. I think it was a way to kind of progress the whole concept of water blocks on your GPU. I just don't personally feel it's necessary. If we had RAM chips back there, then I think that'd be a different story. So here's the block. Oh, it's not as long. Okay. I was worried that they were going to make it like a giant length, but as you can see, it's not. It is only a little bit longer than the card. I'm okay with that. I was worried about it being as long as the card was prior. Oh, dude, check this out. They give us a sick matte black that's all scratched up. <laughs> the big old scratch right there. Jeez. What? EK, how much are you charging for these blocks and you're gonna have a scratch along there? I mean, you're not gonna see it and I'm probably, I'll use it, but guys, really? Can you see that scratch? Freaking Wolverine got a hold of it. <laughs> All right. Accessories and mounting box. All right, so they do not include manuals because it is all QR code, um, which I, wholeheartedly agree with because in the manual is always up to date. So let's take this. They give us their Thermal Grizzly. Um, it's like a Cryonaut, but it's not like the Cryonaut Extreme. I would have loved to use the Cryonaut Extreme. I am going to, I don't need these guys because I have my iFixit kit. I am going to use my KPX Extreme, which is something I have used in all of my builds as long as this has existed. This is some of the best thermal paste in my opinion that you can get your hands on. So we got that, 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 we don't need that. So their tools now, they've got this like kind of a flathead deal, right? Almost like a scraper spudger kind of a thing. And then this is actually hexed. So it's almost like a wrench. And then these are like that round thing right there. People always ask me like, what is this for? This is actually the tool. So you've got your, you know, your, your hex head on there that you can get in there and use with the, the, this is for the old school ones too that have like the one that you'd use a coin. So it's got that in there, it's pretty neat. And then mounting, accessory mounting box. Strix Tough, oh, I, just, I guess the same block works with the Tough, so that's nice to have a single block that works with both. Both. I guess that's helpful that Asus used the same PCB layout. That is a lot of thermal pads. Whole, there's a hole in the back. Holy crap. Why? What on earth? Why do we have so many? One of the things that EK is known for is the amount of screws they would give you, I swear they just had bowls of each type and they just went with a handful on each one because you'd be done building and then you would have like 88 screws left over and you're like, what did I do wrong? Now they're just doing that with thermal pads. There is no way in hell all these pads are expected to be used. 
or they give you extra in case you're an idiot like me and you cut them to the wrong length. I miss the days when they were pre-cut and they were already like sized properly, but they're different thicknesses too, so you gotta be mindful of that. This is such a pretty block. Um, this is the back plate, which as you can see, is textured, so when you touch it and rub it, skin gets stuck to it, which sort of sucks. But I prefer this over their old Jet Flow, Jet Plate one that had the machining marks in it, because that scratched so easy, because it gave all those edges for things to get caught on. When you face it this way, you get this tasteful uh, GeForce RTX, which is gonna show uh, RGB. That is where your power plug is gonna come through, and then this is the front side. So if you go vertical mount, this is the acetal, and that's what you're gonna see. Uh, in terms of RGB lighting, this trim right here lights up RGB, and so does the vector, and then this illuminates, like I said. So that's about, pretty sure that illuminates. It might not, actually. I don't know, I guess we'll find out someday. Oh, and by the way, something new they've done, if you've ever installed the EK water block backplate before, guess what? The new screws, are captive for the back plate. They're captive. Because the thing that sucked was always trying to get it all lined up, you know? And then, uh, nice. Basically the manual, it's gonna give you this guide that shows you exactly what components get uh, like covered with the thermal pad. You wanna make sure you use the right size thermal pads and you put them in the right place. If you put the wrong size thermal pad, like too thick on there, it won't squish and touch the die properly, which will be cooling problems. If you also add it to places that it's not intended, it could create a bigger gap between the block and the other components, which will lift everything off of its... This is very, very... Uh, the tolerances on this are very tight. So if any of these pads are in the wrong spot or you use too thick of a pad because you weren't paying attention, you will have cooling problems. Ask me how I know. So I like to just put my phone right here with the board right next to it. And by the way, the J2 Sense mat makes a very good work surface too. Um, I think we might be out of stock at the moment, but uh, I plan on getting more back in stock. But anyway, so it looks like we're putting them there everywhere there, everywhere here. All right, so I do not want to individually like cut these out. So what I like to do is I'll take the blue side, like the light, the, li the darker blue, the darker blue the dark blue side and put it against the chokes or whatever I'm gonna do and just sort of push it down. And then it gives me an imprint. So I can see where I take my scissors and cut. We will now spare you guys the pain of watching me try and peel, peel these little. In fact, I remember back in the day when uh, water block was $110 and people were like, that's too much. I love that this thermal paste matches their pads for OCD reasons that make no sense. <laughs> anyway, just load it up along the top. I know it sounds like a lot of paste, but you know what? Too much won't hurt, it's non-conductive. Okay, so now we got our cake frosting on there. I leave it kind of thick, that way it does squish out what is uh, unnecessary. There we go. So we just need to put our screws in there. And there's only certain screws that you're gonna use because the back plate is gonna take up the rest. So I've got all the components now with their thermal pads on there as they need. Uh, this is basically what the backside water block would be doing, I believe, it's just thermal pads. I wouldn't be putting thermal paste on here. Um, but anyway, the nice thing about this is it's going to just slide in exactly where it's intended to go. And then we just start threading our screws. This is where the captive my God, this is the first backplate I've ever installed that's got captive screws and it's so freaking nice because trying to get these, like the washers and everything lined up is such a pain. I also really love that the backplate wraps all the way around the edge so you don't see the edge of the PCB. Because to me, the edge of the PCB always ends up being the ugly part of your system, like or your water cooling system if it's, uh, if you can see the PCB layer because it's not that attractive, you know, the PCB layer. So anyway. Just go around, tighten this down. You gotta be careful not to over tighten because you have this tendency to want to just like crank it down, but that's not good for it because you're just, these are very fine threads. You can easily uh, strip them out. So don't over tighten. That's it. That's installed. Man, it's a chungus and a half. What is this? I mean, I already weighed it, but now that it's assembled. 1981. So we lost uh, 550 grams or so off of it. Which is funny because it feels heavier to me than the cooler, but maybe that's because it was so spread out. The density. Yeah, it was like over space. But so if you look at it vertical, 
that's what you'd see minus the fingerprints because I'm handling all over it. I've been touching the thermal pads. So I've got grease all over my fingers. If you go horizontal in the standard layout, that's what you get right there. And you can see that that 12 pin, it's very recessed. How am I gonna un, will the plug? Well, it seats fully. It also goes fully inside. Maybe this is what they, I guess that's what that's for. It worked, but see, I feel like, to be honest, like you can get really solid. That's in there good. And you can still get a pretty good bend out of that without like putting too much pressure on it, I think. So when I get this in my system, I'll be using a cable mod cable, but can I get my fingernail in there? Nope. So if I take that and I just, Wedge it in there. Yeah, it literally wedges in there perfectly. And it comes right out. So that's what this is for. <laughs> Pretty sure. Anyway, there it is. There's our RGB cable coming out the bottom. That's that's the way <laughs> it'll look. I was like, how did I freak that up? But no, I didn't. It was a top side. <laughs> so there's that. There's that. And uh, there you go. You guys have said you wanted to see more water cooling stuff and that's exactly what you're gonna get. So make sure you guys are subscribed uh, for some of the water cooling. I've actually quite a few water cooling builds that I've got to do for various people. And uh, I will of course do longer format talking about what I'm experiencing through the builds rather than just the, the montage stuff, which you guys are like, we love Phil's montages, but we wanna see more about the build itself, which is exactly what we'll do. So I've got a huge mess to clean up here. And uh, you guys have probably got some other videos you want to watch. So thanks for hanging out with me today while I install the water block. And we'll see you guys in the next one.